Hello and welcome to the world of Zwift, the show for all that bonus content you could ever wish for, whether you use Zwift for workouts, for training, or for racing, this is the show for you. So let's see what we've got coming up this week. Nathan Guerra drops in to give us his expert insight ahead of the first race of the Zwift Classic Series. We've got another calorific treat in the feed zone. We get the first Dave Toll meets, a series of interviews between cycling esports fanatic Dave Toll and incredible people from the Zwiftiverse. There's more A to Zwift, and Shane Gaffney gives us a lowdown on his latest workout of the week. But first, if you're a fan of the show, please hit like and subscribe and leave us a comment below to let us know what Zwift events you've been getting involved in this week. And indeed, maybe you're racing around Watopia right now. So if you're going to do that, here is a quick motivational montage from me. Hope you enjoyed that. My bill is in the post. Now let's see what other activities you can be getting involved in around Watopia this week. And if you haven't signed up for the Norseman Challenge yet, do it before it's too late because week one of training is underway with four more weeks before the challenge itself. If you complete any race during race week, you unlock the white Norseman shirt. By doing the run and ride, you get the coveted black version to show off on your future rides. On the 18th of July, to celebrate what would have been Nelson Mandela's 95th birthday, Zwift will be asking riders to dedicate 67 minutes of exercise to raise awareness and funds for the Nelson Mandela Foundation's Each One Feed One initiative. That is 67 minutes to represent each year Mandela fought for social justice. Just join in one of the group rides that day to unlock the Mandela Day Challenge Kit and to help combat poverty around the world. And on the 18th of July, triathletes and level 50 Zwifters Jan Fredino and Lionel Sanders will be going head-to-head -head in a tri-battle royale in Germany. They're going to be competing to beat Fredino's current world record over a 2.3-mile swim, a 112-mile bike ride and a 26.2-mile run. They've both been training on Zwift for this, and they'll be holding one more group workout in the lead-up to that one, as well as a 60-minute social recovery ride the day after the event. If, like me, you're still suffering from ZRL withdrawal symptoms, and yes, I am, then I have good news. This year's Zwift Classic Series, it's upon us. Hoorah! Eight races over eight weeks on some of the most iconic Zwift routes, and we'll be testing a new auto-categorization feature to classify riders, so there's going to be a race for every ability. The first race is the Yorkshire Grand Prix on Tuesday the 13th. Make sure you stay tuned to get the inside track from Nathan Guerra on that Harrogate course. And you can find out how to sign up for the Zwift Classic Series in the link below, as well as details on all of the events mentioned in this week's show. Now, if you follow Zwift Racing, you'll recognise the dulcet tones of my man, Mr. Dave Toll. He's a race announcer who knows more about cycling esports than anyone else on planet Earth. And he's on a mission to meet incredible Zwifters from around the world. And here he is catching up with our first incredible human being. I'm Dave Toll. I've been lucky over the last two decades to be one of the voices of American cycling. And over the last year, I have had a blast being on Zwift, commentating on the ZRL as well as our community racing. We're gonna meet the people that make Zwift so special. We're here in Truckee, California to meet up with Jeff Kabush. Jeff is an amazing athlete. He's a three-time Olympian, a 15-time Canadian national champion. Jeff had a great run in our Zwift Racing League, riding with the Velocio team. This is Kabush, huge engine here. I tell you what, that's a guy that I would look to at this point in the race to try to hold on his wheel. This is the team that was filled with all-stars from various sporting worlds. They had an NHL hockey great, a Tour de France rider, a couple of dads on the team, and then Olympian Jeff Kabush. <laughs> you have pretty good control of the dogs, Jeff. We're really excited to have a chance <laughs> to check in with Jeff and learn more about the secret sauce that makes his life awesome. Yeah, good to see you. Uh, uh, hey, guys. This is... Uh, They're famous. Lola and Ruby. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us. We are so stoked to be here with you, man. 
For Jeff Kabush, age is just a number. 41 years old, but still riding with the enthusiasm of a teenager, the Canadian icon isn't slowing down anytime soon. A fascinating story that started from humble beginnings. I lived in Victoria for a long time, went to school there. But yeah, Comox Valley, Cumberland's kind of more known now for its mountain biking. Super cool little mountain bike destination there. Probably 60 or 70 thousand people but small little community so it's a cool little cycling town and then yeah I moved down to Victoria to go to school did mechanical engineering there it took me a little while to get that all done because it was co-op degree so I had to do five kind of work terms in the summer and finish it off as I was kind of getting good at biking. Jeff could you take us in? Yeah. Hey by the way the Big. Vesulas they are incredibly calm. Yeah I mean they're pretty mellow they're getting older but yeah. Ruby can they will... keep up on the mountain bike? No, those days are past. They don't even like yeah. to go for a jog anymore. Oh boy. Uh, well, I hate, I can relate. <laughs> <laughs> I was pretty blown away the first time I saw Zwift, and I weigh less now than I did then. But at that time, it was brutal. The realism. It was a bit of a reality sandwich, to tell you the truth. When you got on Zwift, were you impressed? Was this going to be something that worked for you? Uh, I mean, I'm always, like I said, I'll opt outside when I can, and I wasn't saying I'm a skeptic, but yeah, test it out and ride inside, and you get into the gamification, which they definitely have done a good job as far as motivating you to keep going and work away at the levels. Like it does for so many of us, Jeff's interest in Zwift went from hobby to hardcore. He now races for Team Velocio in the ZRL. A team stacked with talent from all walks of life. Yeah, 20 guys, quite a cast of characters, most based in the Northeast. A couple other Canadians, Ferentz, the former NHL guy. What's Ferentz been like? He's a, he's a beast on the bike. Man, he's putting out, yeah, 400 watts, and he's uh, yeah, really gotten into, into the riding for sure. So Ted King, I heard when he was racing with you guys that he was rolling up to free Wi-Fi outside of uh, Starbucks uh, or Jack in the Box. Well, there's some, <laughs> yeah, there's a few good stories. I mean, yeah, Ted was out in California and was born a trainer, but realized he didn't actually have the cable to power it. So ended up doing it on his iPhone, riding around Healdsburg outside. So. He did some like 400 watts on his phone, burning through the data. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny when I watch, you get a lot of ride-ons, a lot of Canadian flags. Do you find the Canadians give you a little extra support on Zwift? Definitely a good group, especially uh, with Canada being a bit more winter. I mean, yeah, you don't see a lot of Californians on we, Zwift for good reason. We call that Zwift friendly. Right, I mean, that, <laughs> yeah, that kind of climate. Uh, if you think about it, for some folks, Zwift is a real godsend. For you, you said you were training up here for three weeks here in the winter time, allowed you to keep at least a modicum of fitness going. Yeah, it allows me to enjoy winter a bit more before I'm gonna be stressed after 10 days, you know, to get back on the bike now, hang out here. Yeah, no problem, two or three weeks and do some skiing and still jump on a little bit and keep the legs going. Been super nice for that, and then just with the, the racing, yeah, it's just been enjoyable, especially last year, kind of a social outlet, being part of the team. The occasional little rattler around I'm this not area. scared at all. Yeah. I shouldn't have said that. I am scared. I, I was saying that to show confidence. <laughs> What is it that keeps you coming back here? You could live in a lot of different places. Why is Truckee special to you, Jeff? I've lived in Vancouver proper, North Van in the big city, and spent some down in the Bay Area. But yeah, I grew up in a small town, and the access to the outdoors is never too far to get anywhere around town to do some errands. And I mean, for sure, one of the things on my list is being able to, to ride from home and access uh, the mountain biking and skiing and there's Lake Tahoe is close and the Lost Sierra heading north from here is kind of endless the opportunities to explore on the gravel roads and, and ride in yeah beautiful beautiful place in the mountains. Jeff thanks a lot it was great to be with you here in Truckee we had an awesome time we wanted to say thanks we're going to get back on the road and uh, find another Zwifter to check in with. 
safe travels and we'll see you hopefully at a bike tournament sometime soon. Now on today's feed zone, I've got these Lucho Delitos, which are little blocks of natural guava pulp sugar and coffee. All natural, they come in a natural wrapper as well, which you can dispose of, it's biodegradable. And I love the idea of these. Not being the world's biggest fan of gels, I do like the idea of them. So, let's see how they taste. And the first thing you can see is they are super solid. So, if you take a bite, it's like somebody's dipped a fruit pastel in a coffee and then left it outside for a few weeks. But the taste, mmm, that is wonderful. Very, very organic tasting. You can feel that as you chew your way through it, the mouth feels great. As I say, I'm not the world's biggest fan of like a, a gelatinous shot of a gel normally. People who have used these before have said they're like absolute rocket fuel. Personally, it doesn't seem to be working as yet. Also, as you know, the beauty of an indoor workout on Zwift is you aren't restricted to fueling yourself with little cubes of guava. So if you have a unique indoor ride snack, let us know in the comment section and I may well sample it in a future episode. But can I say, Lucho Delitos Bocadillos, which um, translates to sandwich, that's possibly the best thing I've ever tried in the feed zone. I am so into these. Mmm! <laughs> Now, I don't want to discredit early years education, but there is something more fun than your ABCs. It's your A's to Z's. Here's A to Zwift. U is for U-turn, also known as banging a U-E, pulling a 180, or a simple and quick about face. U-turns are great for free riding. And when you have a mellow ride plan and approaching a massive climb, they're practically a power up you can just hit the down arrow on your keyboard and make sure you're going 15 miles an hour or slower. I've good news for you. The Zwift Classics are back and each week Nathan Guerra will take us round these courses because that's exactly what they are. Classic races on classic courses. He'll look at the history, how to attack them if you're going to race it. And first up, it is the rolling hills of the Yorkshire Grand Prix. Welcome to Zwift Racing Knowledge with me, Nathan Guerra. This is a segment where we take a look at iconic classics in Zwift racing history. First up, we have the Yorkshire Grand Prix, and that is going to be on the Harrogate circuit. The main tactic here is going to be for punchy riders breaking things apart. You want to make this a race of attrition. Each part of this course that is really key has very steep punches on it, and it definitely is a course that can break things apart for those that don't have a punch. As far as the most obvious situation in history on this Yorkshire course, it is something of absolute legend immediately when I saw this course, there's nothing else that would come to mind. And that would be Lionel Viasen's absolute dominating comeback and win after a dropout situation. A technical happened in the middle of a live arena event at the Fiets Magazine Best of the Best. He was on the attack early in the race trying to break things apart and had a full on dropout, losing up to 25 seconds in the dropout. He chased his way back into the lead group and then after that dropped almost everyone in the lead group and ended up in a head-to-head -head sprint at the end. From there, it is him and Vandenbosch that make their way to the line. He actually sets up Vandenbosch for a heads-up sprint very well by baiting him out in the initial kick into the finish line sprint and then allows him to lead him out after he responds to the kick and takes over the front wheel. At that point, he waits to the last 300 meters and sprints the sprints of attrition that is the Harrogate finish. So those who win out in the end are gonna be those who can hang on for a drawn out sprint in the end or can whittle things down completely for a breakaway situation. It is really going to be all about sharp kicks in order to really get the win in this race. 
Now let's take a quick look at each one of the sections out on course. Otley Road immediately after the start lap slash finish banner and it is a right hand turn right into a gradual uphill gradient. It is a longer climb though and initially it's not going to break things apart. On the back end of it you could get a little bit of a split with enough people you could roll away on a very sharp descent. Immediately after Pot Bank Descent, there is a little bit of a riser through Pot Bank Field, which you might be able to get away a little bit. Then after that, a descent into the KOM. Now, bottom to top attacks usually do not work on this KOM. The KOM usually it is the second half of this climb that you can punch away from the rest of the riders. It levels out for a moment at a three to 4% grave, then kicks back up to the KOM banner. That is the section to try and get a break. If you get some bodies off the front, maybe roll away. Snowball effect behind you, keep things together. Now, coming into the sprint section, a lot of times mistakes are made here. There is a lot of speed carried into the initial very sharp bump into the left-hand turn, and everyone gets an advantage from that. It's the attack after the speed slows down. You anticipate how much the riders around you are actually slowing down. At that point, if you give a go, you might be able to even get away to the sprint banner before everyone else, grab some points, or get a breakaway situation going on. Now this is a very interesting finish. For this final kick, it is a very sharp initial kick at 10% gradient or so, and then into a slowly false flat flattening out sprint to the finish line. Because of the nature of this still slightly uphill grind, you have to time things very perfectly and hold on to wheels. Get into the initial kick up the first very sharp grade and then follow wheels right into the last 300 meters. You gotta get a good kick going and build the speed up. It is not necessarily gonna be a full on speed sprint where you get that last little bit in the last 50 meters or so. It's gonna be more about getting a gap or at least getting the jump on your competitors early enough and then holding on to it because of the nature of that uphill gradient. And that's race knowledge for the first of the Zwift Classics, the Yorkshire Grand Prix, as well as an awesome look back at an iconic moment in Zwift racing history. You can also check out some live broadcasts of the Classics over on Zwift Community Live. We'll see you there. Everyone's favorite expert cycling coach and my personal hype man, Shane the Gaffer Gaffney, is here to talk about his latest workout of the week. This one is called Fun is Going Full Gas. This week's workout of the week is called Fun is Going Full Gas, inspired by Matthew Vanderpoel. Matthew Vanderpoel is a force to be reckoned with on whatever bike he's riding. Known for his dominance on the off-road scene, which requires massive efforts and exceptional anaerobic endurance, this workout will put you through a bread and butter workout for Matthew Vanderpoel. Anaerobic capacity training is a pillar of any great sprinter, pursuiter and puncher, or the cyclist who can create very high power for short periods of time. And this workout will drain your anaerobic battery, allow it to recharge, then drain it again, creating an anaerobic stimulus for your body to respond to. Get ready to go full gas and embrace the burn in your legs. Well, thank you for watching another jam-packed World of Zwift show. I'll be back next week with more hopeful non-stop fun and Loddingtons. In the meantime, give the latest workout of the week a go. And let me know how it went in the comments below, and we'll share them next week. Until then, ride on.